Okay, so in the previous video, we looked at how to do a basic snowstorm. But what if you wanted something more stylized? Rather than having every flake have this same roundish image, what if you wanted to have something more stylized, more detailed, like a multi-point snowflake? So it has like six or eight points or something like that and has like some concentric circles. So more stylized snowflake. How would you go about doing that? So it's a multi-step process and I'll go into more detail, but the overview is that you have to create the image in an external program, bring it into Unity, create a material, apply that image to the material, and then apply that material to the particle system. So let's look at how we do that. So first, the drawing of the snowflake. I already drew it in an external program. Anime Studio Debut, you can use whatever you want. It just needs to support an alpha channel because the background need to, needs to be treated as such. So you just, as you saw, drag and drop the image from the folder that you saved it in into Unity. You need to change this asset from a texture type default to Sprite 2D UI. You apply, and you can see now it's treating the background like a background. Okay, so that's the first step. We have our snowflake. Next step, the material. Right click, create material, snowflakes. And now, as I said, we have to apply this to this. So we take our snowflake, drag and drop it, put it into Albedo. And then we have to change the material itself from standard shader to particles and we'll choose additive there's lots and lots of different filters that you can use i'm not going to go through them this one is the one that suits our needs okay so already we've gotten the first two steps done we have our image we have the image applied to a material now we have to apply the material to the particle system so let's go ahead and do that we're going to select the particle system and then you just drag and drop the material then we click on the other one drag and drop the material and now let's run it and there you go you can now see that they are not just dots but that they are actually that six pointed uh image that i drew Okay, so far so good. But now that you've added a shape, it's now obvious that they're not spinning or rotating. So we're going to do that. And this is actually going to be a two-step process. The first rotation that we're going to do is going to have a problem, which you're going to see. And then I'll show you how to get past it. Because again, game development is iterative. Okay, so there is the appropriately titled rotation over lifetime so you have the particle system selected rotation over lifetime put the check there to enable it and this is the angular velocity so this is how much it's rotating on a certain axis so let's keep that one for now so i click on the other particle system rotation over lifetime 45 and now we'll run it So it's hard to see that they're rotating. They are, but very slowly. But there, the issue that I was mentioning that is wrong is you can see that even on the ground, they're still rotating. Not so cool. That if, you're, if snow is rotating while it's already landed on the ground and it's still rotating, you got some issues. So anyways, what we want to do two things. A, we want to speed up the rotation because it's a little slow. Two, we want it to stop rotating when it hits the ground. The second part is a little less accurate. It's a little bit more just kind of eyeballing it to see if it looks right. So what we do is we go back to rotation over lifetime. And what we do is we choose curve now it order it takes that 45 that we were already using and puts it at the top here so you can still change this number if you want 
But what you're saying now is you're saying that you can create keyframes here and say uh, that you can change the rotation. So first things first, let's bump that up to say 180. And now we'll go back to the other one, do the same thing. Go to curve, change it to 180. Now let's run that before we get into the actual nitty gritty of the curve. That's a little bit better. It's definitely rotating more distinctly. And now you can really see how on the ground the stuff is rotating. Okay. So if you wanted to be really accurate, you'd, you'd want to calculate how much time it takes to, between the time that it is instantiated it's spawned, if you will, to the time that you, that it lands, because you, when it lands, you want it to stop rotating. So like I said, we don't have the exact numbers, so what we'll do is we're just going to kind of eyeball it. The more important point is you learning about how this works, the fact that you can set the rotation over time. So as you can see, when we're looking at the curve, zero, that's what we want. We want it to be at zero rotation at a certain point. So this is a very, very long amount of time. It is 45 seconds. And we probably only want it to be running for about two seconds before it stops rotating. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to choose add a keyframe. And then what we're going to do is we want it to stop there. So that's what the, that's the last frame in which we want it to um, rotate anywhere over here doesn't matter right click and add another frame drag this one down to as close to perpendicular as this as possible so in other words for this amount of time it's going to rotate and then it's going to immediately stop rotating because we're bringing this down to zero likewise we need to bring this one down as well to zero now let's run that and see how that looks this will only be one of the two I'm not going to copy it over to the other until we know that this is right. It normally won't be this difficult because you probably normally won't have a start lifetime of 45. That's why it's a little bit difficult to get this precise. You're probably going to, I'm not going to say what the normal lifetime would be, but I suspect a lot of particles would probably dissolve after like 10 seconds. Um, so 45 seconds is a very long time for a particle, I would say, under normal circumstances. And so, some of the particles are going to stop rotating. Sure enough, you can see, like, that one's not moving, that one's not moving, those aren't moving, whereas these other ones are. So that actually looks pretty accurate. So, if you point at this, it'll show you... It sh oh, there we go. Sorry, you actually have to click on it. So, it says 0 0.056. So let's see if we can get the same setting. So we right click. So I clicked on the other particle system, create our two keyframes, bring this one down to zero as well. And we said it was five, six, there we go. All right, and let's see how that looks. That looks pretty close. It looks like it stopped as soon as it hits the ground. So I think we have what we want. So just like that, you've added in uh, a unique shape, or should I say a shape of your own design, rather than having it use the default circle. And now you've added rotation over time. And in addition to adding rotation over time, you've also, um, you've also chosen when that rotation ends. So uh, you've just learned a few more advanced aspects of particle systems. So if you want me to continue with this series, let me know. But this was really meant to be just kind of a fun way to learn about um, particles. And uh, as I said, in game, you might actually take a somewhat different approach to make snowfall work. But again, it's meant to be a way to introduce particles and some of the things that you can do with them. Okay, so I think that's about it for this video.